A popular ebb and flow system from custom automated products is the versatile ebb and grow. CAP's standard system, the EB12, is delivered with 12 2-gallon grow pots connected to a controller module, which in turn is connected to a 55-gallon nutrient reservoir. The controller module controls the flow of nutrient solution between the nutrient reservoir and the grow pots. This actual system setup shows the placement of the grow pots, controller, and reservoir. The large 55 gallon reservoir contains the submersible flood pump and allows for storage of an ample amount of nutrient solution for up to 48 grow pots. Also, although accessories, this reservoir contains an air stone and nutrient test equipment probes. The reservoir top provides a protective cover, houses the flood and drain fittings, and has an access hole which allows for easier nutrient control and a place to run any additional hoses and test cables. Inside the controller module, we can see the drain pump and discharge hose, and also three float switches. The lower switches control the drain pump and the upper float switch controls the flood pump in the nutrient solution reservoir. In operation, when the 24 hour timer activates, the flood cycle starts. Note the depressed cogs on the timer dial. Each depressed cog activates a flood cycle. Once the flood cycle activates, the flood pump starts filling the controller tank. Since the grow pots are connected to the tank, they start filling at the same time as well. The flooding process will take several minutes depending mainly on the number of grow pots attached. More grow pots equal a greater volume of fill, which of course takes longer. Since the controller capacity is considerably smaller than the combined grow pot capacity, it will fill first. The flooding nutrient solution approaches the float switch, eventually actuating it at the operation level and stops the pump. Don't forget that initially the grow pots are not totally filled yet, so as the grow pots continue to fill, the level in the controller tank drops, which starts the flood pump again to maintain the operating level. This on and off cycle continues until all the grow pots are filled to the desired operating level. At this point, the flood pump will remain off. Each grow pot reservoir gets ebb and flow action through its single flood and drain fitting. A free flooding plant growth container is placed at each grow pot reservoir and rests slightly above the flood and drain fitting. The plant container usually remains in place for the entire growth cycle, but can be removed if necessary. This crop of freshly transplanted heirloom tomatoes has been placed in this established ebb and grow system. The remainder of the growth cycle will take place in a ventilated darkroom enclosure under separately ventilated 600 watt metal halide lights. In this case, clay aggregate is being used as the growth medium and as you can see, the grow reservoir is almost completely filled with nutrient solution. All grow pots are flooding at the same rate. At the end of the flood cycle, the liquid level can be checked by moving aside some of the growth medium. This level has been established about one half inch below the media surface. Keeping the nutrient level below the surface of the growth media helps prevent algae growth. As the timer moves from the flood position, the drain cycle is initiated immediately. 
In fact, the controller will stay in the drain cycle ready mode until the next flood cycle is activated again. The drain pump begins pumping the nutrient solution from its controller tank to the main nutrient reservoir. Once again, keep in mind that along with the controller tank, the grill pots are being pumped out as well. When the level reaches the low point, the float switch operates and the drain pump shuts off. The drain system then waits until the float switch is activated again by increasing level coming from the grow pots as they drain. Ten days after initial transplanting shows excellent results from this growing system. The plants have good looking foliage, appear very healthy, and have grown evenly with the help of a well distributed lighting system. The plants are already close to 22 inches tall. The stalks are thick and sturdy. The overall health of these plants is helped by increased oxygen caused by the complete air change in all grow pots during each cycle. 27 days from initial transplant shows the plants are well into the blossoming and fruiting stage. We switched from metal halide to high pressure sodium on the 14th day, shortly after the first blossoms appeared. Note the developing fruit on this heirloom black plum tomato plant. This ebb and flow system and its surroundings have provided an excellent environment for plant growth and development. An excellent, easy to use alternative to hydrogen is the two gallon inserts from the Sure to Grow company. Unlike hydrogen or rock wool, this medium is pH neutral and requires no cleaning or preparation. You merely place the insert in the grow pot and it is immediately ready to use. The cutout on top of the insert receives STG germination cubes or cloning plugs. These STG cloning inserts fits all cloning machines that I know of, are easy to install and provides an excellent environment for the plant's roots. Insert the rooted clone carefully but firmly to place the plant in position. This new pepper plant is now ready to join other plants already installed in an operating ebb and grow system. At the grow site, we install the grow bucket into its reservoir where it will remain through harvest. This new growing medium is very light, doesn't require treatment, and is very easy to handle. Nineteen days later shows the efficiency of this growing environment. The STG growing medium appears to be an excellent choice for the ebb and grow system.